Urban exploration was my thrill. The adrenaline rush of sneaking into places long forgotten, it was intoxicating. Tonight I was venturing into the old Willowbrook Asylum, a place infamous for its dark history and alleged hauntings. I arrived at the asylum just after midnight, the air crisp and biting against my skin. The smell of damp earth and decaying wood filled my nostrils as I approached the entrance. The towering, ivy-covered walls towered over me, their shadows stretching along the moonlight path. I slipped through a gap in the rusted iron gate and made my way to the main building. The heavy wooden door creaked open with a groan that echoed through the empty halls. I stepped inside. Each step I took stirred up a cloud of dust that tickled my nose and throat. The beam of my flashlight cut through the darkness, revealing peeling wallpaper, broken furniture, and scattered debris. My footsteps echoed in the vast emptiness, amplifying the sense of isolation. The asylum had been abandoned for decades, yet it felt like something was still lurking in the shadows, watching me. I wandered through the halls, my heart pounding with a mix of excitement and fear. The stories about this place were unsettling. Patients mistreated, mysterious deaths, and ghost sightings but I had never encountered anything paranormal in my explorations before, and part of me hoped tonight would be different. As I ventured deeper into the asylum, the air grew colder and the smells more pungent. The stench of decay became overpowering, making me gag. I pulled my gas mask up over my nose, trying to filter out the worst of it. The oppressive atmosphere seemed to press down on me, the silence almost deafening. I entered a room that appeared to have been a dorm. Rusty bed frames lined the walls, their mattresses long gone. The floor was littered with yellowed papers and broken glass. As I scanned the room, something caught my eye, a dark stain on the far wall. I approached it, the beam of my flashlight revealing a smeared, hand-shaped mark. My heart dropped to my stomach when I realized it was dried blood. A sudden noise made me jump, a soft, shuffling sound coming from the hallway. I turned off my flashlight and pressed myself against the wall, holding my breath. The shuffling grew louder, closer. My heart raced, every instinct screaming at me to run, but I froze. The sound stopped just outside the door. I strained my ears, trying to make out any other noises. After what felt like an eternity, I slowly peeked around the corner. The hallway was empty, but the uneasy feeling remained. I turned my flashlight back on and decided it was time to leave. Whatever was here, I didn't want to meet it. I retraced my steps, moving quickly but cautiously. My breath came out in visible puffs, and I shivered uncontrollably. As I neared the entrance, I heard it again, the shuffling sound, but this time it was accompanied by a faint whispering. I started to panic. I started running, the beam of my flashlight bouncing wildly. My imagination made up images of the asylum's former patients, their spirits trapped in this place of suffering. I reached the entrance and pushed through the door, the fresh air hitting me like a slap in the face. I stumbled outside, gasping for breath, the whispers fading out. I didn't stop running until I was back in my car. As I drove away, my hands shook on the steering wheel. I had always loved the thrill of urban exploration, but tonight had been different. Tonight, I had encountered something I couldn't explain, something that had left me questioning the safety of my favorite hobby. The asylum remained a dark silhouette in my rearview mirror, its secrets hidden in the shadows. I knew I would never return, but the memory of that night would haunt me forever. <laughs>